Hello and welcome to my review of the Necron's Illuminor Seraz. This model will set you back £30. It's a fair amount of money, however I do feel it's worth it. This model is the vanguard of the brand new Necron's release uh, for 9th edition. It's the first widely available new Necron model. Uh, the rest will follow suit in the upcoming Indomitus box set, which includes all brand new Necron models. Uh, looks fantastic. He is currently the most expensive single character HQ model for Necrons, not including the Catacomb Command Barge. The Silent King is clearly going to be more expensive, and, and so is the new Catan Void Dragon type model thing. You can still pick up uh, the original Illuminor Seras model, in places however the new model is just superior in so many ways in terms of rules he's had a big buff in almost every area there's no real reason for you to be using the old uh, rules in the 2018 uh, necrons codex because you can find the new rules in the uh, ninth book of the psychic awakening series pariah no doubt his rules will also be in uh, the Necron's upcoming 9th edition codex, uh, but that could be in another uh, month or two. He is a very, very good looking model. Yes, he's £30. He's not as expensive as uh, Gilliman and, uh, and Abaddon. However, they are more expensive. They are £37.50, so they're £7.50 more. And actually, Abaddon has less parts than Seras, but Gilliman has 10 more parts. Both of them have arguably uh, better, more detailed scenic bases that encompass more of the base. However, this is more focused, I want to say. Um, it's got skulls in places, it's got iron girders, it's, it's got reinforced concrete iron bars sticking out, it's got little scarabs, it's got a full um, imperial guard or astra militarum or whoever it is having all of his flesh and skin and bodily fluids just be ripped uh, away from him uh, from seras himself uh, so there's a lot more activity happening on his base compared to um you know those, those other two characters he's not a primarch and he's also not a, a near primarch like like abaddon is but he is a pretty powerful character um for necrons uh, but with the advent of the Void Dragon and, and the Silent King, he's going to be put uh, a bit to the, the background, I think, with, uh, with the new releases. But I just hope that Games Workshop spend uh, as much time as they did designing him with the other Necron uh, characters. I really do, because going from the old model to this is just night and day. Um, okay, let's have a little look at the model. So it is unfortunately a pain to put together. I broke two pieces uh, of this and I was silly careful using the cutting knife to get extra parts of plastic off of the pieces uh, that um, were from the sprue. Uh, but I, I broke a couple of pieces, I can't remember which ones they are, but I glued them pretty well and then sanded them down. Uh, you do get a fair amount of mould lines on every single one of these legs. Um, it's not too bad that it's plastic and you can glue the legs individually one after another uh, and a couple of the legs are part of their base as well however right at the end you're going to be um if you haven't glued it to the base you're going to be left with this big chunk this one this one and this that all have to line up and and sit level with that flat side of the base and you can see there's a fair bit of glue around in places because that's uh you know it may be a bit tricky to pull off right at the end um even if you have lined up every joint and every other part uh correctly um it, it's fascinating really how this model goes together um you've you've got this which is separate from the the hand area thing but this is glued to part of this model's hand which in turn uh is connected to um the the spear itself and then the body is connected to the the leg um, this leg is connected to this piece of scenery um, which which then glues onto this piece of scenery uh, the, these are separate their the face is separate the arms are separate but they're a bit 
picky to try and get to you know glue together however this arm is connected to all of this stuff here uh, and um, this finger thing and also it then has to connect to, to this tubing uh, it's not as kind of difficult to put together and to get set up than I don't know say any Devastator squads or Sisters of Battle um, retributors or you know where you have to join the piping up that's always quite a tricky part of, of the plastic models um, but it is a tricky it is a tricky one uh, it'll def definitely test you um, co you know compared to the other other models I, I do wonder if uh, the the other Necrons are going to be as difficult to, to sort of put together and are as fragile I never thought that neck you know this is the most fragile Necrons have ever been I think um, this is uh, you know at least this is a battle um, fragile. I just think that a lot of models are becoming more and more fragile with, with the extra bits of detail and getting the plastic um, thinner. But you saw the big sprue and that's what you're paying for. You're paying your £30 for the, for the one sprue and this amount of detail which we'd normally only ever see in 412 models. Uh, you know, you paint this up, you spray it. It's going to be hard to decipher between this plastic model and a, and a Forge World. Um, uh, made this because there's not an awful lot more detail that they can put on it. There, there's already like chips and pop marks in the uh, the armor plates, which the Seraptech doesn't have for you know reasons. Um, but still, incredible amount of detail for what you get, and um, just a lovely, lovely character. Uh, let's just have a, look, a little zoom in of the detail of this poor, unfortunate soul. And his life force ripped out of him, drained out of him, and this uh, ridiculous Eldritch Spear or Lance. We're going to have a go through. We're going to have a good look at the rules in a in a bit towards the end. So there you go. Um, fantastic model. I do think it's worth a thirty. I don't think that they could have sold it um for twenty five, especially when you got Primaris captains and things at about twenty two pound, twenty five pound or so. Um. So let's go on to the uh, size comparisons because there are no spare parts. The first comparison I wanted to make was with just a normal Cryptek, which I thought was, you know, quite a decent model. Uh, all those, what I want to say, four years ago, did it come out 2016? Um, but quite a decent model. This was like the, a taster of what, what was to come in a way. I thought there was a lot of detail there. But even this model, where you think there's a lot of detail, just pales in comparison to, to this new one. Um, but that gives you a little comparison there. Next to a normal um, Necron Lord, right here. Uh, Lord is, is um, you know, smaller than the Cryptek itself. And uh, Necron Warrior. Yeah, dwarfs a Necron Warrior. It's going to be a similar sort of size to the uh, the new the Scorpec uh, Lord and the Scorpec Destroyers. Um, I think he's going to be a little bit taller than them, but we'll see. And um, they're they're due to come out uh, in a few weeks' time. Uh, finally, just comparing to a Wraith, it's still not as tall as a Wraith though, but this is the tallest Wraith um, with this weapon. But uh, hope that size comparison helps with all the Necron models. Now comparing him to Imperial models, I've got a Primaris on the right. Uh, Sly Marbo in the middle and then a normal Space Marine uh, on the left. Hopefully you can see that there. Just how uh, big he is, how much he, he sort of dwarfs the Primaris. So yeah, quite a tall model. And then a final special bonus, I'll be comparing him to a heavy construct uh, Seraptek from Forgeworld. So here he is next to a Seraptek. As you can see, Seraptek is uh, a bit like Imperial Knight size, I guess. Um, but uh, yeah, it, it, I love how uh, there's a lot of shared aesthetics here, specifically the legs and the kind of rounded ball joints. Uh, it even has some cabling in places, which uh, which um, the Seraptek does. Uh, and I like how it's got one, two, three, four joints. One, two, three, one, two, three. And I think on the other walkers, they've got uh, four as well. Um, similar kind of armor plating and this spine system um, that the Seraptic has, has uh, adopts as well uh, and these kind of shoulder, I want to say pauldrons, armor plates uh, that it's got. It just doesn't then adopt but then it's got this, uh, but then he, instead of the pincers and the weapons he's got um, uh, four arms there uh, which you know work in tandem. I like the fact that he's got his uh, front arm gripping the uh, 
the, the lance and um, he's got his rear right arm gripping it too but then his front arm and his rear arm are both um, working on the, the little contraption there uh, amazing but um, that's how he compares to my largest um, Necron model so this is my part of the review where I will go through all of the rules for Illuminor Seras now you can get his rules in the 2018 uh, edition of your Necron uh, Codex. However, they are now out of date and I won't be using those. I'll be using the, his new rules from the Psychic Awakening book, uh, Pariah. Uh, no doubt his new rules will also appear in the new 9th edition Codex for Necrons. But if you can't wait for that, uh, I've got some good news for you. His rules are included in the box set, uh, all the full rules there. He is an HQ choice, of course. He's a power points cost of a seven and uh, a points cost of 130. And um, putting him quite, uh, quite expensive, really, 130 points for a, a single character. His movement speed is eight inches. His weapon skill and ballistic skill are both three plus. Strength six, toughness six, seven wounds, four attacks, leadership 10, and a save of three plus. Now that is such a big improvement over his previous rules in the last codex, which saw him actually costing more in power points, uh, costing eight, and costing more in match play, 143 points. Uh, comparing his stat line in the new rules, he's faster, he can move the eight inches instead of six. Uh, he's got a better strength at strength six instead of four. He's also got a much better toughness at six instead of four. He's found an extra two wounds from somewhere because he now has seven wounds instead of five. He still has the same number of attacks, leadership and save though. His weapons are better overall. In his previous rules, uh, the Eldritch Lance um, was double the range. It was 36 inches, which was nice, but at least now it is half the range, but you could get a possible three shots. But its melee profile is better because um, it adds plus one to the strength. The AP is better and it does more damage uh, and on top of that he's also got extra attacks with his impaling legs which he never used to so speaking of which he is a single model equipped with an eldritch lance and impaling legs you can only include one illuminor seras model in your army his weapons he's got the eldritch lance so shooting wise it's a range 18 inch assault d3 strength 8 ap minus 4 and a damage of d6 in melee it's a strength plus one so that would be strength 7 ap minus 3 and a damage of 2 and then he's also got Impaling Legs, which is Strength of the User, which is still 6, AP minus 2 and a damage of 1. And when the bearer fights, it makes 2 additional attacks with this weapon. Pretty good there. So he's got 4 attacks normal, and then he's got those 2 extra attacks at minus 2 AP. Abilities then. He's got Living Metal. At the start of each of your turns, this model regains 1 Lost Wound. You don't have to roll for it, you just uh, regain 1 Lost Wound. That may well be uh, useful um, if he's only being stripped by one or two wounds um, per turn. Master Technomancer. Add one to rolls made for the reanimation protocol's ability of friendly Necron units within three inches of this model. A unit cannot benefit from both the Master Technomancer and Technomancer abilities in the same turn. It's quite straightforward. You've got to be within three inches though. Atomic Energy Manipulator. If this model destroys one or more enemy units in the fight phase, then at the end of that phase, it can use its mechanical augmentation ability as if it were the end of your movement phase. We'll talk about that in a moment, but um, it basically means you can get another go at it uh, if you um, wipe out a, uh, an enemy unit. Empiric Overcharger. When a psychic test is taken for an enemy psyker within nine inches of this model, that enemy psyker suffers perils of the warp on any dice roll that includes a double, instead of only a double one or double six. Pretty good, so it's a bit of an anti-psyker, although he doesn't have any psychic abilities himself. Mechanical augmentation. At the end of your movement phase, you can select one Necron Warriors or Immortals unit from your army that is within six inches of this model and has not already been affected by this ability this battle. If you do so, roll 1d3 and consult the table below. So you don't have to roll any dice for that. It's just you roll the d3 to find out what happens to the Warriors or Immortals. And you can only use it uh, once per unit per battle. Um, so you can't keep adding different augmentations. It's only one augmentation uh, for, uh, for that unit. So if you've got a, a number of warriors or a number of immortals nearby, then, you know, within six inches, then it's worth uh, 
taken him for these abilities because when you roll a d3 on a one you add one to the strength characteristic of the models in the unit until the end of the battle on a two you add one to the toughness characteristic of the models till the end of the battle and on a three you improve the ballistic skill characteristic of models in that unit by one until the end of the battle e.g ballistic skill three plus becomes two plus now that's very decent it's great for the immortals to increase the strength and the toughness but also it's great for the warriors um, to increase their ballistic skill it means that um, which will affect the number of hits that you're going to be able to apply onto an enemy unit it's just a shame that it only applies for uh, warriors and immortals rather than all of the necrons but still i kind of get it you know he's a little bit like fabius bile in a way but you know robot wise <laughs> um, and he can uh, he you know he's able to augment um, the surrounding warriors uh, around him. The keywords Necrons, Character, Infantry, Cryptek, Illuminor, Seras. Very decent model, uh, decent stat line, he's been buffed, he's you know he's better than he ever has been both model wise and uh, rules wise. I do think he's missing a couple of things, I think he's missing some kind of like shielding you know, maybe he could have had an extra ability to augment his shielding to get him to give himself an invulnerable save. But of course, he does have the living metal rule, and his, his toughness and number of wounds will um, will help him with that. And uh, no doubt, you'll also be able to buff him with with other characters and other Necron HQ units. Uh, so, so that's the only kind of weakness I can see—a lack of any kind of invulnerable save. Um, but he's very survivable, very tough and uh, he's pretty good at both shooting and uh, melee and he's faster than your regular troops you know at being eight, 8 inch movement speed you know he's still got an effective range of 26 inches it would have been nice if that lance was a little bit longer range but 18 inches it is what it is I would have rather it been sort of 24 inches but there we go and that's the end of my review for Illuminor Seras what do you guys think what do you guys think of the model and the rules uh, for me, when I first saw him, I thought that is one cool looking Necron model and uh, he's going to look excellent with the rest of um, the, the new uh, releases. And um, can't wait to show you all of them once they're released. Please do put your thoughts and opinions down below if you are starting up a Necron army because of the, the look of these new models. Uh, it'd be great to hear from you. Thank you ever so much for joining me today. Thank you for watching. All hail the machine.